Hello and welcome to this, the last part of our current series looking at Pixar Renderman's image tool. It is what it's called. Um, in this tutorial, we'll not only be looking at the image tool, we'll also be looking at the Renderman batch rendering technology. So we'll have rendering out a brief animation and bringing that into the image tool and having a look at it within it. So we'll be looking at a few different aspects of Renderman within this tutorial. So the first thing I need, obviously, is some animation. And I'm just going to animate this blue cylinder. Most of you know how to animate within um, Maya, I'm sure. So I'm just down the timeline here, hitting an S, and I get a little red tick here for keyframe. Let's go to frame 24. I'm going to be in move mode. So let me hope that it actually selects correctly, which it has done this time, and move it across to here and hit S again. So now what I have is an absolutely fantastic animation of blue cylinder moving. Okay, what I need to do next is I need to actually set up some stuff with the Renderman controls window. Previously, what we've been doing is rendering a single image. So we've actually been rendering name and extension single frame, which means that our frame range and animation is not available to us. In order to render out an animation, we need to go to one of these settings down here, which are pre-coded and they're they're editable um, ways of actually save, saving out multiple frames. So name, number, and extension will do me for this. Quite happy with that. And our image format as Maya IFFs, quite happy with that at the moment. No real worry. Um, what I will change here, now that I have the frame range available to me is I'd like to go from frame 1 to frame 24. Okay, so that's the setup I'm going to do here. I'm going to leave my quality settings as they are. Shading range. I'll actually drop my shading rate slightly. I'll drop it to 5. Don't need anything particularly good here. And ray tracing I'll leave on. Okay, so that's all I'm going to do within the Renderman controls window. And we can close that off for the moment. Now, how do we actually kick off a render which is going to work through an animation. If we have a look at our tools up here, what we have been using previously is this tool here, which if you can see in the YouTube video, it says render current frame. That's not actually going to do much for us. If I just click this and render, it's going to launch the image tool all right, and we get our render, which is looking okay, but it's only a single frame. What I need to do is use this window here, or this button here, which is batch render. Now, I'm going to go through the top bar menu here because it gives me access to its settings more easily. By default, quite often, the rendering threads is set to 1. Setting it to 8 gets me more access to the multiple processors and threads which are actually available within my machine. You also have access to a whole bunch of controls here for Tractor and Alfred and render farm management tools, which I don't personally use because I'm on a single machine, um, but it is something which is definitely something that's used in production because you don't want your machine to be tied up while you're rendering out a sequence. Okay, so I've just set it to eight threads here and I'm gonna hit batch render. It does an automatic save, which I quite like because this is the kind of time when things can crash and I wanna make sure that I save, so Go to continue. Okay, and I'm going to open up my Mel listener here just to see what's going on. Um, the last command that's issued here is rendering with Renderman, which is cool. As we wait for a second, it will start to kick off the renders, and we can see it's actually going through the renders here. So percentage of rendering and the image and the location. If we see the location here, that's where the files are saved. Now I'm going to quickly pause here so you don't have to watch all these rendering and come back near the end. And this has been remarkably quick in actual fact because the quality settings were reasonably low. There we go. All rendered. But where are they? They're in this location here. So let me go to it and actually raise the window, which is window it. I want to actually load in an image sequence. So how do I do this? Right click add sequence. 
Now, where is the image? It's going to be in my directory, which I've been working in, which is actually this, it training under Renderman. And let's see what the file was under. It's the 929 directory, 929 directory, and images. There are all the images which are rendered out. Now, all this is customizable. And all I need to select is the first of the sequence and go to open. And we can now see that it has loaded a sequence of images. We can see that's actually here in our it window. It's loaded the sequence, but it, we don't actually have it in our catalog here. We don't have a view with which is um, animation. So let me just go and right click, generate flipbook. And it's actually adding these together in RAM as a flipbook. So I can stop this, I can scrub this, I can have settings so it swings backwards and forwards, which some people like to be able to actually see what's going on with their animation. So that's loaded in a sequence of images and made a flipbook from them. Okay, these are the only controls we actually have for the flipbook currently. Let's have a look at a few more commands which we can actually do within it because we have a little bit more time. I want to run this to about 10 minutes. Um, what I want to show you now is I want to actually load an image. So if I go to right click here and add an image, I can actually go to a separate directory. I'm going to go to my Renderman Volumetrics. It's taking a bit of time. Sometimes it does when I'm screen capturing. Um, images, images, source images. Okay. And open up this image here. So it's sometimes useful to be able to load images into our image tool so that we can use them as sources for colors. If we go again, we went through this in a previous um, tutorial, but the drag command will let us actually select colors. So we can see the drag command here, we're selecting colors. Now this will actually work. We can drag it into um, Slim to set colors within RenderMan for materials. But it doesn't actually work, unfortunately, when I'm screen capturing, as I mentioned before. Okay, so let's go to drag again, and I'm going to change drag to crop. And with drag to crop, I'm going to actually select a section of this particular image. And if I now right click again and go to command and crop, what that's done is it's actually taken my original image and it's, it's cropped the image down. So we have now two images. And the second one is named with a crop after it, okay, which can be useful at times as well. A few more commands which we have available to us. Let me just turn off drag crop. Okay, a few more commands which we have available. We can rotate by 90 degrees. We can rotate by arbitrary numbers as well. It appears to have disappeared. If we go to view and fit image, we can actually see that, that image there is rotated. Not sure why exactly we'd use it, but it could be useful to us. Okay, um, a last command which I'm going to show you now, which could be useful, is currently I have, I'm just going to render out a single image here. Let me just go to set this back to single. Okay, name single frame. Um, I've got my quality settings quite low here. So the quality settings are five. I'm going to even make them lower. I'm going to make the quality settings 10 and spark off a single render. I just go to view and fit image. There we go. That's our render here. Um, that's the render which we have at shading rate of 10. Now let's throw one in which is going to be shading rate of 1. I'm going to make this always on top. Try re-render. Okay, so we now have shading rate of 1. You can see there's quite significantly less noise here, but let's just have a look at what we can actually do to highlight this. It may not be quite so clear on YouTube. So what we can do to actually highlight this is if I go to Command 
and diff. Multiply the difference one. Okay. This is showing us a script result because it is in actual fact a pretty heavily functioned um, compositor. So it's showing me the difference between this image and this image and giving me the result as this, which again can be quite useful for highlighting when you have quality increases within images. Let's leave things here with it at the moment. Thank you very much for your time and patience. I hope you've enjoyed the series on it. It's very powerful and worthwhile getting to know in your render manual workflow.